Hunt, isn't it? Councillor Hunt. Yes, Councillor Hunt. And this is Councillor Peter. No, it's Norton. 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 That's all I need to know. I've got really much. There's a copy of the previous minutes to sign. For me to sign. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, some of us have been downstairs to the uh, truly splendid launch of the uh, Portsmouth City of Sanctuary. Um, and if we're really quick, we can get back down and have some more of their lovely food. It is really an extremely good cause, and as a citizen of, citizen of Portsmouth, I'm very proud to have uh, been, been there. Um, welcome to the Planning Committee. Uh, in the interest of safety, if the continuous fire alarm sounds, please evacuate the room and public gallery by the stairwells, that way or that way. Don't attempt to use the lifts. Please assemble at the Queen Victoria's statue in front of the civic offices. In order to um, comply with the Guildhall's fire marshal regulations, please remember to sign out when you leave the building at today's meeting. After a committee... Um, after, after committee members have declared their interest and agreed the minutes of the previous meeting, I'll announce each item and ask those of you who are here to make a deputation to come and sit at the table. After the planning officer has made the presentation for the application, individual deputies will have six minutes, six minutes to express their views and joint deputies will have 12 minutes between them to make their views known. After which, you, you will take no further part in the proceedings unless we need to ask a question to clarify a statement that's been made. Members will then ask questions, make comments, and the decision on the application will be made. Both members of the committee and members of the public are reminded of the need to consider material planning matters and not refer to any personal information about other members of the public. Can I draw everybody's attention to the fact that this meeting will be live streamed, in other words filmed, by a camera at a fixed location at the back of the meeting room and that the recording will be on the council website. The camera will mainly capture the backs of those making deputations, but there will be some footage of those making deputations as they approach and leave the table where the microphones are located and of people entering or leaving the room while the meeting is in progress. Members of the press and the public are also permitted to record the meeting on the understanding that that doesn't disrupt the meeting nor records those stating explicitly that they don't wish to be recorded. Is there anybody here who wants to state explicitly that they don't wish to be recorded? Okay, thank you. Uh, can I ask everybody to use the microphones provided and uh, to draw attention to they want to speak by uh, in the same way? Thank you. So we've got only um, two things on the agenda today. First, I would like to um, ask for apologies, please. Well, Chair, um, as far as I'm aware, Council Luke Stubbs should be here. Um, we do sometimes start at 1.15, so I'm wondering if that might be the cause, but he certainly hasn't told me that he's not coming, and Councillor Wiley is two minutes away having come from work, so he'll be here any moment. Thank you, Councillor Atkins. Mm -hmm. When did you have one of those? Atkins. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, look. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Okay. Chair, I'm subbing for Councillor Hugh Mason and Councillor Rob Wood. I gather you need to be away by 3.30, so uh, I hope... I, uh, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> and also apologies have been received from Councillor Claire Udy. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, it's not an interest as such, but in the interest of transparency, um, because I am the uh, Cabinet Member for City Development and Planning falls within that, um, the applicant in this particular application has asked to meet me on a different matter tomorrow. Uh, I have not met him before nor had any conversations with him and have not spoken to him about this particular application, mm. but it's very possible that somebody will see me with him in the Civic tomorrow and uh, start putting two and two together and getting five. So in the interest of transparency, I'm just putting that on the record. Thank you, Councillor Pitt. Councillor Jones. 
Uh, thank you very much. It's a um, well, it's a personal ish, but non pecuniary um, in that I do know of Matt Wilder. I don't have his phone number. I don't know where he lives. I know he supports a developer. I know of him, but I certainly don't have any personal connection. Councillor Hunt. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Madam Chairman. I don't have any interest, but I was just wondering, because if people are watching, watching rather, uh, they might wonder who's whom. Just wonder if you might be kind enough to go around the room, as it were, let everyone say what the, who they are and what they do, what their role is today. Very good idea. Um, I, I'll start then. I'm Judith Smythe. I'm a councillor for St Jude Ward, and I'm vice chair of this uh, planning committee and pleased to be chairing my first one. So... Um, Anna Martin in Democratic Services. Uh, Councillor Susie Horton, um, Central Southsea Ward. Councillor Rob Wood, uh, St Thomas Ward, subbing for Councillor Hugh Mason. So I'm uh, Councillor Lee Hunt and I represent Nelson Ward. Councillor Steve Pitt, Central Southsea Ward. Uh, Councillor Donna Jones, Hillsey Ward. Councillor Terry Norton, Drayton and Farlington Ward. Alison Pinkney, Planning Officer. Simon Turner, Planning Officer. Sim Manley, Interim City Development Manager. Kieran Laven, Planning Solicitor. Thank you all very much. So we have the minutes of the previous meeting held on the 23rd of May. Um, can I go the them for accuracy first? Um, page one. Two, three, four, five. They're all acceptable. Right, well, I myself wasn't at the last committee, as you might recall. Do I have your permission to sign it, even though I wasn't here? Councillor Pitt? I we just need to propose and second. I don't think the issues with you signing them because you don't them on behalf of the committee does isn't that right, Kieran? But I'm happy to propose. I'm happy to second you. Yeah, obviously I'm happy to second. Yes. Thank you very much, Councillor Norton. Welcome, Councillor. Me to sign. So I'll sign them then as they've been seconded and proposed by somebody else. Okay, we've got two items on the agenda, and I'd like to move straight away to um, the item that actually is on the agenda in this order but isn't in my papers on this order so we're moving straight to the planning application oh yes are there any first of all are there any updates on uh, previous applications that anybody wants to raise uh, i have nothing to update on thank you councillor pitt uh, thank you chair um <coughs> i'm aware of, of a uh, recent appeal decision uh, which the council was successful in defending uh, regarding a sui generis HMO uh, and how that impacts on our existing SPD. Um, and I wondered if we could ask Sim to just uh, give us a brief update on that, please. Uh, yeah, we've um, we have received a an appeal decision relating to this. It's the first one where um, the inspector has actually come down against the uh, and dismissed the appeal on the basis of the um, impact upon the character of the area. Um, so that is something that we're looking at, and which the timing's uh, reasonably good because we are actually in the process of updating and uh, reviewing our supplementary planning guide uh, document on that. Um, so that obviously is something we will be looking at uh, in terms of bringing that document forward. Councillor Jones. Thank you, Chair. Can you tell us which one it is? Just so I can... It's number 13, Winfield, Wincliff Road. Councillor Hunt. Yeah, forgive me for asking, what do you mean by the impact on the area? Uh, what does that mean? Uh, 
Um, he assessed that he thought that the, um, the, the change of use would get, had an adverse impact upon the character of the area that is a residential area and that this obviously is a change that, that, was, um, that was adversely impacting upon it. I can give you a copy of the document if you wish. I just want to tease, if I may, Chair. So, Wincliffe Road, is it that there are no HMOs in that area and therefore by putting this one in it would change the nature of that area? There are uh, quite a few in that area and I think it's just basically talking about the, um, the impact that the, the, this change would have um, towards eroding the, the character. So it's an additional change. Um, but I obviously, short of reading out the whole document to you, I can... Oh, sorry, I can give you a copy of that for you to have a look at. I, I commend members to uh, read it because previously we'd given grounds uh, to re for refusal of similar um, applications because of the our policy being broken, and this one was about the effects. So it was a different way of dealing with the same thing, and as apparently more successful. We tried that in the past. It's never had any traction at all so it's interesting to find that this has got traction all of a sudden i'd be pleased to read it jones but from what i understand from councillor pitt it's because it, it it's not it, that application wasn't in accordance with our own adopted policy which is the 10 percent it was actually over the 10 percent which means that our policy is being robustly challenged and standing up which is good item four is the dates of meetings um has have members noted it noted those and uh, they're, they're listed on the agenda 14th of July, 14th of August, 11th September, 9th of October, 6th November and 4th December and they're all on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock. Proceed to the application for um, a full planning application for the Connaught Arms, 119 Guildford Road, Portsmouth. And um, I, I'd like to ask... Um, for Alison, Alison. Alison to introduce it to us and uh, pr present it. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Good afternoon, councillors. The application before you comprises the change of use of the ground floor of 119 Guildford Road from a public house to a shop, together with associated extension and external alterations to the south and west elevations. The application site is located at the staggered junction of Penhale Road and Guildford Road. The public house has been vacant for a number of years and the upper floors are currently undergoing conversion to two self-contained flats permitted in 2016. The site lies within a predominantly residential area uh, with schools to the west in Penhale Road. This shows uh, the view from within Guildford Road facing north and standing within Penhall Road facing east. You'll see just on the right of the photograph uh, Penhall News, which is a shop that has been uh, mentioned in uh, various representations on the application. And this is a view <coughs> looking north again up Guildford Road to the existing service area uh, of the pub. So it has access into uh, Guildford Road. To deal first of all with the proposed change of use to a Class A1 shop, it's noted that there are no site-specific land use policies that would discourage the use of the site for A1 purposes. Although many objections are concerned with the potential adverse impact on nearby existing A1 outlets, because the size of the site is below the threshold for any sequential testing, the issue of potential retail competition is one for market resolution and not via the planning system. Another particular concern, common pro, uh, concern that has been voiced has been pressure on parking within the area and highway safety issues. Uh, this, these matters have been looked at by the Highway Authority, uh, who has raised no objection to the proposal, recognising the time-limited waiting opportunities that exist to park immediately outside the site, the speed limit of 20 miles an hour, and that trip generation for an A1 use is mostly daytime generated, whereas public houses would generally be in conf conflict with peak times for evening and weekend residential parking. Both uses obviously cater for the local community um, and attract uh, many customers by foot. 
Therefore, subject to the recommend, uh, recommended conditions, the principle of the change of use is considered acceptable to A1. Moving on now to the external alterations, these comprise fenestration changes to the elevations facing, facing the highway to create openings more conducive to retail use whilst acknowledging the architectural features that make this building characterful. Window openings would retain their existing width apart from the wider door entrance that would be required on Guildford Road, but would be increased in depth with the existing chamfered details replicated at a lower level. These alterations are considered to appropriately reference the proportions and vertical emphasis of the existing building. This slide shows you the existing and proposed eleva elevations on Guildford Road. This is the elevation on Penhall Road. And you can see where the proposed windows will be dropped down. That's a typical detail of the chamfered detail that would be replicated when each window is dropped down. And again, existing and proposed treatment of the window openings. The <coughs> existing rear service yard is located is the location of the proposed extension to the building. The single story form with part with uh, part pitch, part flat roof, uh, whilst fairly sizeable in terms of its footprint, is not considered likely to be a readily dominant feature as seen from either the street scene or neighbouring properties. The residential amenities of surrounding occupiers and those who will occupy the flats above the public house are concerned the current public house, are concerned adequately protected by the recommended conditions relating to sound insulation, assessment of noise from the operation of any plant required by the shop, and opening hours have been uh, limited by condition between 7 in the morning and 9 p.m. daily. The applicant uh, hadn't suggested any opening hours, so that's a local planning authority recommendation. Uh, members' uh, attention is drawn to the fact Sorry, that's the, um, the roof plan of the proposed extension. So it fills most of the service yard and would have a false pitch, essentially, with a flat roofed element behind. Members obviously reminded that this is, um, whilst it's um, not in use as a pub at the moment, um, its lawful use is as a pub um, and it has an unfettered use in terms of opening hours um, that aren't controlled in planning terms. Um, so to conclude, the change of use to Class A1, single storey rear extension and the external alterations to the shop front are considered capable of support subject to the recommended conditions on your papers. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Um, I'd now like to ask for um, <coughs> Councillor Ashmore to um, make his uh, deputation. Please, you've got six minutes, Councillor Ashmore. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillors. Uh, yeah, this one is a bit of a weird one. It's, uh, as you mentioned, it's um, been empty for a little while, uh, for a couple of years. It's had two planning applications on similar grounds uh, rejected over the years. Once, once I think, by officers, the other, it was thrown out by committee, uh, and then they went to appeal, and then in Bristol, and they turned it down as well. And it's interesting that you were mentioning, you were discussing earlier about the adverse effects on the area being... Uh, part of the planning thing, which uh, Councillor Hunt mentioned as well, and our, and our policy, which Councillor Jones mentioned, um, the adverse effect on the area of having another shop there. One of the reasons the one of their previous applications was thrown out was because it would change the, change the character of the area, and it would be, the extension on the back would have been too high, and it would have you know blocked out the light and those houses the back there of Manchester Road, and also it could you know residents are concerned that it would create it would start becoming like a, a mini high street. Uh, you've got, as you say, you've got a shop across the road. You've got a shop down. You can't see it on there, but it's down the, the other way in Newcombe Road. They're happy with those. They don't like the idea of a shop. They don't like the idea of, d you know, delivery trucks uh, turning up between the hour, even if it's limited to opening hours between seven and nine. Deliveries could be at any time. I believe it was uh, a big chain like Tesco was going to take it over. So either that. You know that, that's a bit more than just um, a, a delivery that you'd get for a usual corner shop, and it'd probably be more traffic going down there. Um, it's also a weird one in that there's another planning application for the site by the same person has gone in 
for the whole thing to be homes for the flats above and a house at the bottom there that one has got the support of residents and also the applicant who's put it in is also uh, to his credit engaging with residents saying he would be happy to go for the one with homes residents would be uh, more happy with it not being for commercial use and it for being for residential use and obviously it means there'll be more homes uh, there'll be more homes there uh, where we haven't got any at the moment when we're crying out for that I think that would be a much better use of the place as well but considering it's been thrown out twice before um, by committee and it's been thrown out by, by officers before I I'm again opposing this on the same grounds as the other ones were thrown out um, so yeah I'll just leave it up to you there to, to make that decision but also Bear in mind that there's another planning application going in for homes, which I think, on a personal level, and engaging with the residents there, uh, would be much more suitable for the area. Thank you very much. Is that, that all? Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I understand if we uh, turn to our report, and I will ask um, for some help from Alison on this, um, the pre previous appeals are described, um, and uh, there are some grounds of the previous um, refusal of permission and also I understand we have to consider each planning application on its own merits and we could have six on the same site but it's not up to us to decide which is the right one we just have to look at each application on its merits. Um, Alison could you comment on the previous um, the other question. Yes, yes Chair. Um, there were indeed two refusals by the Council um, in the past. Um, the, the first one in 2016, or it was a 2015 refusal, went to appeal. Um, the council refused it on the, um, on the impact of, and the design and appearance of the extension, uh, and also on the um, external roller shutters. Uh, when it went to appeal, the inspector, um, clear, and I think I've provided extracts within um, my report, the inspector was comfortable with the single story extension. Uh, he was not comfortable with the external roller shutters, but the whole application got refused um, as, as uh, one action. Um, then the council refused a, a slightly smaller um, rear extension, but this one wasn't flat roofed, it was with a pitched roof. Uh, but again, that refusal uh, was before the inspector's um, decision in September of that year that um, it, it, um, set out that he was, he was happy with the principle of the single story extension. Oh, uh, could I just also mention, this is the first time that the change of use um, is, has been considered under this application. Previously, they could have explored uh, a temporary change of use under permitted development rights, but those rights were removed in 2017. So they would now need to make it, that's why they now need to make an application for the change of use to a shop. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Alison. Um, it's now um, the time for me to ask... Um, members of the planning committee to ask questions about um, this proposal. Yeah, thank you. So, um, thank you, uh, Alison Pinkley. Just wanted to go to page seven because I think you sort of re you were referring to the extension and the planning inspectors. Uh, extract there. He's not talking about the extension is he he's talking about the actual building in there he refers to the building he says why the building may indeed not be designated my impression of it is that whilst it may lack some material etc etc so he's not talking about the extension he's talking about the actual building um, Councillor, if I refer you to the very uh, second so the last paragraph yeah no I know got oh, the last sorry. paragraph yeah it's the first one that I'm talking about the while the building, he says, uh, like other corner pubs in Portsmouth, its location and form marks it out as a feature in the extensive gridiron-like network of streets. So he's talking about the pub, isn't he? Yes, he is in that paragraph. When well, he's yes. considering his appeal, he's talking about the pub and how it sits in the street scene and how it adds to the character of the uh, area. Indeed, yes. Indeed. Councillor Norton. Thank you. So just to confirm, the, uh, the proposed building will lose those parking spaces that are there. Is that right? So if you see there's a space, a white van there and a... That, uh, that's outside the planning application site. Okay. The extent of the planning application Is site comes to this, building, yeah. yes. So okay. there's a, a rear service yard at the moment with vehicular access in at this point. Okay, and second question, um, around the front of the building and probably over the road, are, are we looking at any double yellow lines? So yeah, there's some there, aren't there? Yes, 
Yeah, and double yellows there as well on the corner. Okay, thank you. Councillor Hunt again. Okay, then to carry on with the <clears throat> first observation I was making, then. So this application, the um, the proposal is to drop all the windows down, so cut through the sandstone sills which are, let's face it, integral to the appearance of the pub. So if this were granted permission today, it would be forever altering the uh, facade, the front of the building, and, uh, as I say, slicing down through the um, sandstone windows, uh, sills, that have been there for probably ever since it was built. Is that right? Uh, it would require those physical alterations, yes. So somebody would take a disc cutter to it and cut through the sills and go right down through the brickwork almost to the ground in order to put in what presumably, I would guess, will be UPVC windows. Is that right? Because there's nothing in the report about the uh, materials to be used that I can see. Unless I've missed it, although I did read the report, I can assure you. That's probably in the condition. The materials to be used in the construction external as hereby shall match in type, colour and texture of those on the existing building. So I, I withdraw that then. But the point is that they're going to go straight down to the ground, or almost to the ground. Uh, thank you. The, um, yes, within the section on proposed alterations, uh, it confirms that they, the windows will be constructed of powder-coated aluminium with safety glazing. Uh, the windows will come down to the black um, store riser that you can see in the, uh, the photograph there. So presumably in there at the moment we've got wooden windows and uh, stuff that's, uh, the, and, and materials that would be what you would expect in, in that sort of building. Is that, is that about right? At the moment, I think you can see, uh, yeah. possibly from there, they are timber. Yes. So on that hand. picture there, you're going to cut straight down through, down to the ground. Those wooden windows will come out. Uh, some aluminium stuff will go in. And the, the face of the pub, which the planning inspector thought was important to retain, will be forever destroyed. Is that right? Uh, it's certainly true um, that they would need to make these physical alterations. The time of the appeal, they were considering uh, large external roller shutters that would have gone... Uh, I, thank you, I did read that. You're right, so the roller shutters aren't in here. And they didn't, no, and they didn't um, respect sort of the opening um, proportions and design. Um, this application seeks to um, keep the width of the windows so that the, you still have the vertical emphasis that the rest of the building has. Um, it, it, it's not a locally listed building, it's not in a conservation area. Um, it was considered that um, to, in order to <coughs> drop each window, uh, then that would retain essentially the, the sort of vertical emphasis and character of this building. Indeed, thank you so much. And that's what the planning inspector says, isn't it, in that paragraph. He says, while the building may indeed not be designated, my impression of it is that whilst it may lack some of the material refinements and facade establishments of some of its contemporaries in other parts of the city, it is nonetheless an interesting building in its own right. More significantly, like other corner pubs in Portsmouth, its location and form marks it out as a feature in the extensive gridiron-like network of streets for housing. It's, uh, and in this respect, contributes much to the distinctive urban landscape. That was his decision. Thank you very much. Councillor Jones and then uh, Councillor Wood. Thank you very much. My question relates to paragraph 2 um, and 3 on page 8, um, talking about the pitch of the roof on the rear extension. Um, I wonder if we could just go back to the proposed elevation. Uh, and, and whilst I appreciate um, you don't have the drawings here from the previous one, um, what was passed or what was deemed acceptable at appeal was a flat roof and this is obviously now a small pitched roof. I have read the um, appeal inspector's comments. Uh, so the application that we refused back in 2016, was the pitch higher, lower or about the same as that? Um, this is the, uh, the drawing that was um, went to appeal. So this is the flat roofed um, extension. Right. So I had it at the end of my report. Um, yeah. So uh, the the current proposal is 250 millimetres higher than the flat roof that was part of the dismissed appeal. 25 centimetres. Okay. All right. Can we? Can you just go to the pitch one so that we can just compare it to that drawing? Okay. 
Okay. Thank you. Councillor Wood. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Policy PSC 23 is quite a comprehensive one, which is not only about design, but it's also the context and, and how it sits in its area. I think reading between the lines, and even the planning officer has pointed out quite clearly that he has some sympathy with the style of the building in its context and the fact that it, how it relates to its near neighbourhood and locality. I think whatever they do at the front, it's still a big shop they're going to build. Which in a building that was clearly a substantive building that has character as a pub and there is also a shop so we we as councillors can't deny the fact that um, this will effectively um, be a shop that may change that neighborhood there because being a a already having a shop in the area and then putting another shop which is going to be a shop whatever you say whether it's got rollers on or not it's going to have a big frontage and that big frontage is there to attract people to that area to stop and park and go into the shop etc and this is in in other areas we've we've obviously looked at the nature of a street um, we have the SBT 20 which is to address that um, we have mixed economies in an area and we give residents the ability to help define their area in a way that planning understands. So what I'm trying to understand with P PCS 23, it talks about design, but then goes on, that is only the first couple of lines, it then goes on to talk about the context of the building, how it sits historically, and how it contributes to the local area, and that's open to interpretation. So what degrees have we got? So do we take into account the fact that we know this is going to be a shop, a big shop with a big front end, which was never intended for a pub, um, and effectively you're doing a makeover and, and you're making sure the pub is on top, and this will be what the street scene that residents will see in a predominantly residential area with a neighbourhood shop currently, and they clearly are trying to articulate they don't want a big shop in their neighbourhood because of what it will bring and how it will look in the in, in a residential mainly residential area that they currently live in. Thank you, Councillor Wood. Can you make a question out of that one? We're on questions at the moment. I'm trying to phrase it in, in the context of what. Thank you. Obviously, a balanced decision has to be made. Um, officer Level, we've um, looked uh, at the alterations that are proposed for the building. Um, in our view, um, there isn't uh, there aren't any land use um, policies that would discourage the actual use. Um, in terms of the alterations to the building, yes, there will be an impact on the building, um, but uh, it's. We've reached the view that it is at a, to an acceptable level and still maintains um, the important architectural features. Um, obviously, uh, that's the weight that I've applied to it. It will be down to councillors to, to reach their view. Chair, can I just have fun for So I understand on the, the acceptability on the building, but I'm trying to understand the interpretation of is it the historical context of that area. So is this... <laughs> I'm guessing this is a mainly a residential area, etc., with with an odd shop, a neighbourhood shop. So, will a second shop have a substantive impact to the area, the context of where it sits? Uh, it is a predominantly uh, residential area. You do have a couple of um, schools to the west, um, and then you've obviously got Fratton Road um, further to the um, west. Um, the, uh, the view is that um, to have a shop of this size in this location um, is considered acceptable in the mix of uses that you have in the area. Um, we're mindful that it is, uh, has a lawful use as a pub at the moment, um, and whilst it's vacant and residents uh, have benefited from a um, relatively quiet uh, environment at the moment, um, it could uh, come into play again and then you would have all the noise activity and disturbance that will be generally related to um, an active uh, public house. So. We're still on questions here. Councillor Atkins. Um, I, I note that when the um, 2015 planning application was refused, it was refused partly due to the unsympathetic flat roof design. Does that mean that we should regard the camber on the roof as an improvement um, in terms of its appearance? 
Uh, yes, the council did refuse it in terms of um, its design. Um, the inspector obviously um, felt that that um, particular design solution was acceptable in the context of the area in the building. Um, the addition of a false pitch um, increases the bulk somewhat to the extension um, but yes in visual terms you it would probably lose the flat roofed element visually from from street scene uh, point of view though you will see it from upper floor levels of surrounding properties you'll still see the flat roofed element but um, it could be viewed as a, a visual improvement um, uh, just a, another question I had um, relates to th there was a mention in the report I can't uh, off the top of my memory exactly where it was of um, Possible external um, sort of appliances related to the cooling process inside the shop. Could you perhaps talk me through a bit more detail about like what, what external uh, might be vis visible in terms of um, um, you know cooling or other appliances that the shop uses? If permission were given for a shop, it's obviously highly likely that there will be refrigeration um, and cooling um, equipment that will be required probably 24/7 in terms of refrigeration. Uh, the applicant hasn't provided details where that would um, be within the site, although it's understood that they would be looking to um, have it within part of the extension. Um, because of the absence or silence in that of, of those details, that's why there's um, a condition recommended by the Environmental Health Service in terms of uh, any noise that would be generated by that and uh, to look for mitigation measures in the event that there would be foreseen a problem. Thank you. Give you um, just in terms of, of some of the issues that were raised by um, residents, obviously it's, it's um, the strategy to have uh, a kind of a, 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 a long-standing sort of pub-type building change its use, but it has sat empty for some considerable, considerable period of time. Um, I note that the, the highways had no objection to um, any of the traffic or parking issues raised by residents. Um, and it also appears that in terms of um, uh, the fact that there is another shop present in the same location um, doesn't seem like it's a relevant consideration. Is that correct? Is, is, are there any of the sort of residents' concerns outstanding that we, can, we, we should take into account um, in, in this decision, or, or have they largely been addressed by sort of expert bodies? Uh, they have been addressed in terms of the Highway Authority has um, seen and we've discussed the objections um, and they didn't consider that they could uh, lodge an objection on highway safety grounds um, or uh, parking within the surrounding area. Um, so I believe uh, it hasn't been addressed in terms of there's no specific control or condition we can place on parking. There is no um, parking on site available. They would have to be using surrounding roads. Councillor Pitt, another question? Yes, thank you, Chair. I'm slightly concerned by the a couple of um, the assumptions that we're making here about the, the comparison between a retail unit and a pub. Um, for, as everyone knows, for donkey's years, I ran a pub that was on one corner of uh, a block and on the other corner of the block was a shop. And I can absolutely tell you that the pattern of deliveries for a pub are nothing like they are for a shop. Shops carry fresh produce. They have deliveries every single day. A pub has a dray that comes once a week, and if it has a different wine supplier or soft drink supplier, maybe once a week, once a fortnight. So you're comparing one, maybe two deliveries a week, which would last for a maximum of 15 minutes, to shops selling perishable goods, which will require refrigerated lorry deliveries and a whole range of other things and will be very unlikely to come on one lorry unless, of course, it is a national chain, in which case they also make regular deliveries during the course of the week because there happens to be a Tesco's Express at the end of my road and I see the lorries pull up every day as they do outside the co-op as well. So I'm a bit concerned that we're just saying it won't be any different to a pub. I'm also slightly concerned by comments that say that noise and disturbance, etc., would be more likely to be associated with a pub. The licensing objectives clearly give a route for residents to complain should that sort of thing happen, because they have recourse to the licensing committee, whereas the level of footfall that you would expect with a shop in terms of coming and going is vastly different. If somebody came into my pub, they would take, even if they were a rapid drinker, 15 to 20 minutes to drink a pint and leave. 
somebody's in and out of a shop sometimes in one to two minutes so I'm not saying it's going to sway my decision but I think it it's a mistake in this report for us to just say that it's like for like because in my view with the experience of doing what I've done for many many years it absolutely isn't and that presumably is one of the reasons that it was given a different use class order recently uh, by central government any further question questions Right, I'd like to get on to comments now. Uh, Councillor Hunt. Uh, I've looked at this uh, and uh, read through all the reports. I've taken listened to what the officers have said. I've read through the planning inspectors. Uh, clearly, I've read the planning ins uh, inspectors' uh, thinking. And I don't think that there's any doubt whatsoever that if these windows were removed and new modern materials were used and as it's been described in the meeting today cutting down through the uh, for want of a better word uh, historic uh, uh, window sills that uh, uh, to replace it with these modern materials would undermine its contribution to the urban landscape of the area PCS 23 as described by the planning inspector who clearly knows a great deal more than me. Last time it was a roll of shutters, this time the deciding factor is the uh, replacement windows which we've heard are going to be aluminium powder coated grey colour I think. So that's, an, that's, a, that's a, um, uh, a move towards trying to um, sit them into the, new, into the building but uh, these uh, these would by, uh, be unsympathetic and the proposal to remove the window seals and replace them with these modern materials do amount to an unsympathetic feature which would fail to relate to the unique art architectural quality of the former pub which was the former decision when this committee was looking at it uh, about roller shutters so it's the same principle um, there you are, I've put it forward I hope that it will be supported. Um, PCS 23, it says here that the following will be sought in new development. Which this is um, a development. Excellent architectural quality in new buildings and changes to existing buildings. And I don't think that this does that. Thank you, Ma Madam Chairman. exactly the proposal Councilman. I've just read it out three times to refuse it okay you didn't say that before yeah yeah, yeah. I so think it's pretty obvious <laughs> you liked it. Uh, yeah. okay so you, you there's a proposal I beg your pardon that's to refuse it and to I, refuse I it on the grounds of the unsympathetic nature of the windows would that have a uh, secondary if uh, okay that would can I ask for comments from the planning officers please Thank you, Councillor. Um, if I can come back on some of the, the various points you've made, Councillor Peter wouldn't dispute there are, uh, it's not like for like, there are differences in, in opening hours, uh, behaviour possibly, um, deliveries and so on, so yes, I wouldn't dispute your point that there are some differences between a pub and, and a local shop. Uh, Councillor Wood, um, you were interested in the uh, the play between historic character of a use and visually of an area I think and how they all fit together um, clearly the building is a substantial building of some historic uh, value on the corner there quite big and attractive it will be more attractive uh, as and when it's reused and uh, uh, renovated and repainted and, and new windows etc etc which will go on with the the accommodation that's going in upstairs residential and either the, the, the shop or the other application if it's approved um, that could happen, whatever the use, doesn't need any use necessarily to achieve that. But I think um, in terms of it being a shop, it's going from one sort of publicly accessible building to another sort of publicly accessible building. And I think in broad character it retains that sort of key uh, publicly accessible uh, nature on a corner plot that all residents can use should they want to for some sort of benefit. In terms of its nature as a shop, because um, we are retaining the, the great majority, and this, this comes on to the uh, Councillor Hunt's points of the, of the character of the building, um, you wouldn't get the typical uh, modern shop front cutting through in a big uh, landscape manner. Um, so I think it would still retain a lot of the character um, of the previous, uh, the previous character 
albeit a shop now. But I think the fact that they're retaining the vertical emphasis of the windows and not cutting across them is really important. And because that's a limited change to the overall building, and the overall building is strong in scale and quality, especially when it's renovated, and we do consider that the overall character of that building will remain positive for the local area to re for residents to use as they see fit, shopping in this instance. And then turning to, to Councillor Hunt's, uh, Hunt's um, <laughs> sorry, uh, Councillor Hunt's um, points about the character of the building and the design. Um, that's what we certainly looked at really carefully, um, really carefully, along with the other factors. And I think one of the key points was the way the uh, recess, which we saw in the photographs before, is quite deeply recessed from the um, elevations. And I think that will make the difference. Uh, councillors in terms of the overall character of the building. The, the 2D diagrams don't really assist and you can't read the character of a building when the um, bars and the mullings are taken off but that is a deep recess and um, I think that will be instructive and helpful notwithstanding that there's a cut down as, as you've talked about um, I think that will still retain the depth the architectural depth and shadowing depending where the sun is and along with the overall size of the building um, that's why we felt we were able to uh, recommend it positively. Uh, don't worry about the C word, it happens so much you wouldn't believe it. You, you wouldn't believe it. It's all the time. <laughs> yeah, it did, yeah. yeah, thanks for keeping a straight face. I mean, we could, we could. It, honestly, Simon, it happens so much. You're not the first, really and truly. Why it happens? <laughs> order, order. <laughs> order. Um, are there any other comments, yes, any other points of view? Councillor Norton. Thank you. Yeah, no, I am torn on this one, um, and the reason for it is that I really do feel that all of my concerns are, are non-material. I think the reality is that, you know, yes, it's disappointing that it will likely affect a, a local business. Um, you know, the, 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 the trucks that pull up for the deliveries, we see them all over the city. They often ignore whatever rules there are about dropping off and they stop on double yellow lines and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I, I really do think that if we try and pin this on any kind of material consideration, we're going to be clutching at straws. Um, the seven to nine uh, opening times, I think, are, are reasonable. Uh, the fact that it's had uh, two... Um, it's been it's it's come before us or it's been to appeal twice it's been rejected i think probably adds to the fact that it's likely to go through anyway at the cost of um the, the you know taxpayer and all of us um we know that these are expensive processes which often leave the council a little bit out of pocket um you know on the likelihood of appeals uh other concerns loss of parking well they're not building on that parking area that's there, they're, they're, they're keeping that. There is a safety concern over the, the road. I know the road is a bit of a rat run round there. You have to kind of go all over the place to get through and, and go past. Um, that exists already. I don't think it's going to impact particularly heavily on that. Um, and of course there are questions about the, the, the school being there locally and will that have any kind of impact on, on that and any safety issues. I just don't think it will, um, but I do think it's worth pointing out that we have to deal with these on material grounds. So regardless of non-material um, considerations and for all of those who are objective, I think it's important to highlight that you know, we, we have to look at this at the case of, uh, of a planning application and although there are personal circumstances in there, we, we can't really consider those because they don't have value and they'll come back on appeal. So um, I am struggling to find uh, any reason to, to to refuse it really on, on planning grounds and also we must do all we can to ensure that we make use of empty buildings. Um, I'm not prepared to comment on you know whether it will come back as a uh, an application for homes because we have to look at the application that's in front of us but again you know what are we doing can we confidently say that we're doing all we can to make use of empty buildings if we're turning down applications like this thank you it's just a comment it's not a uh, proposal at this stage um, it's not a proposal at this stage that's fine there was a couple of things uh council Norton, that you raised which i may be able to help you with a little bit um a lot of the comments you made were actually uh, very sensible in terms of the uh, local residents not particularly wanting a shop. We don't have a policy basis to get against which we can resist that. Um, it is fully policy compliant and as we've as we know from training, 
the starting point, the main material consideration is your local plan, and if there isn't a local plan policy and that would support us in defending this uh, change of use, then uh, we would be struggling at appeal on that. Um, in relation to concerns over um, uh, deliveries, and it's something that Councillor Pitt raised, we, we are, if, if members were minded to approve this, but did have concerns about delivery, we could impose a condition uh, limiting the deliveries to certain times so that at the moment the hours of opening are limited but the, the deliveries are not controlled by condition and if you had concerns over those and wanted to have more control over those you could in fact actually um, resolve to actually a, a, approve but with an additional condition to control that element if that's how you, you obviously you, you need to think about that and consider that um, but overall um, in terms of the impact we've obviously had a, we've had a, um, a motion put forward to actually refuse the application on the visual impact grounds and um, in respect of that it it is a historic building it is members need to be mindful that it is not a listed heritage it's not a locally listed heritage asset um, so it has no statutory protection from uh, any s statutory um, listing at all um, but it is a prominent building within the street scene and that has been identified by the inspector if members are mindful of the fact that, that of uh, and consider that the proposed development the alterations to the fenestration and let's be very specific about it it's going to be the ground floor alterations to the windows um, if you consider that they would be detrimental to the visual appearance of the building um, that's obviously something that's very subjective and obviously something that that um, would be acceptable if that's the resolution you come up with because it is something that, that isn't based upon an evidential base it is something which your opinion in relation to that refusal thank you um Notwithstanding the fact that I completely appreciate that we, we don't go with the, the whim of what people want. If we did that, we probably wouldn't get much past at all. Um, but actually listening to what they're saying, I think I actually think there is grounds for refusal on um, amenity. And also, I have to say I don't agree completely with the recommendations from the highways, but that won't be a first. Um, I think the thing for me about the change of use is we have to consider what that could be used for in the future. If someone said to me, that's going to be a furniture restoration uh, business, um, it conjures up a very different picture of, of, that, of the impact that that would have on that, on that community and that amenity than what seems to be, by the suggestion of um, refrigeration and everything, to be some kind of convenience store, even though we might not know whether it's like a, um, a, chain, a chain store. But, and obviously there's an establishment that there is a shop there, but I think we, we've got a responsibility to say what is the worst case scenario for um, the impact of um, a Tesco's type um, shop and I think um, that will have a demonstrable and negative impact even just on the refrigeration noise etc and I know we can put in planet you know sort of restrictions um, about what that what that is but the other thing is those shops we know we know from all over the city when they go in they attract cars um, particularly if it's an established chain and um, the, and we know that there's a legal parking and I think that's what Councillor Norton was probably indicating with the, the double yellow lines bit is we know that there's a problem with that and we also know what this area is like and again as was alluded to it's not a straightforward road it's a quite um, a complicated <laughs> um, uh, system of roads which if anyone who's gone down there thinking they can make a shortcut knows that they're not and that in, in, again will increase the traffic in that area um, and that leads on to all sorts of issues like air quality and the number of journeys etc etc so I actually think we do have grounds for refusal I mean I agree with some of the comments that were made about um, changing the, um, the building, but actually I think more on amenity. I think we have grounds for refusal. Thank you. It's not a motion just yet, is that, that right? Because I've got... I'm quite happy. Okay. I've got... Uh, Councillor Jones. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I, having given consideration to the application, I think there are two um, relevant policies, obviously, that we've had highlighted, PCS 17 around transport and PCS 23 around design and conservation. And I actually think that 
Um, whilst I acknowledge some of the points Councillor Norton's just made, no, Councillor Horton. So, no, no. <laughs> slips. Um, I don't think that we've got um, professional support here from our transport team that would warrant any kind of refusal. So, discounting PCS 2017 for the moment. Um, therefore, my comments are very much uh, focused on PCS 23 design and conservation. And actually, this is a, this is quite a difficult one because um, we didn't like the brief previously, a uh, previous um, committee back in 2016. Uh, but an inspector was happy with that uh, elevated roof height above the boundary wall, and I think it would be remiss of us to today to refuse um, on the basis of the pitch of the roof height. I personally think pitch roofs are more attractive than flat roofs anyway. It's a personal preference. Um, and certainly with a building that's as attractive looking as this and is a key prominent building in the local area, I think a pitched roof on the back there, um, 25 centimetres over or, or higher than the previous um, proposed flat roof, uh, would probably add to the street scene and make it look slightly nicer as opposed to a flat roof. Um, then we move on to the point that Councillor Hunt made, and that's the one about the impact of the windows. And actually, I think that really, for me, is where a lot of this comes down to, because it's whether or not we like it, um, and let's work on the assumption at the moment that a number of committee members aren't comfortable with the windows, it's whether or not we think that those windows are so bad that um, a refusal on the basis of a contravention of PCS 23 would be upheld. And actually, I noted down something Simon said, which is that um, whilst PCS 23 is relevant, this building is, it might have been Sim, sorry, one of the two, the building is not listed, therefore it's not afforded any specific protections, but it is a prominent building in its locality. So, with a heavy heart, I don't think that we've got real strong grounds to refuse this, and I think we're likely to get fined and lose an appeal. I hope the other application in the houses goes through, and that's the one that, because as soon as I saw this come through, when um, I read the, the papers yesterday, I thought, why would they not go for housing until I got to the point where it said there's already another application in? Because, of course, most developers would get this building and see the, the biggest pound sign, which is clearly residential, as opposed to an A1 shop. Um, so I know we can't use that as any part of our consideration today. I do hope, as Councillor Ashmore said, um, that the other application is successful. We can't predetermine that but let's see what happens with that one but certainly on the basis of this I, I'm minded to support the officer's recommendation I don't think there's grounds for us to have an upheld uh, refusal and therefore I don't know if I'm going to have a second hour, but I'm going to propose the officer's recommendation seconder for that no not yet yes yeah no I'm happy to second that for you know the reasons that I made in my in my comments really i really do think this will come back to appeal and we will lose so. we've, we've also got the fact that any residential development to the ground floor would have also result in changes to the external appearance haven't we? may i just get some guidance from the officers please i mean i brought this up and you know, members are talking about we can't refuse or permit this because if it goes away it will come back and we will get fined should we really be, cons we, you know, we can think about that, but should we really be taking that into account when we're coming to the view about a particular planning application like this or deciding on its individual merits? Obviously when you're, um, uh, as a member of the authority and um, like officers, we do have a fiduciary duty to ensure that we spend the public purse uh, uh, in, in a correct way and obviously as part of our role as planning officers is to give you a view as to whether or not there's a likelihood that we would be successful in appeal. Um, one of the things about um, when you are looking at a case where um, a case of a successful case of costs is what we're talking about is, is um, held against council is where we're deemed to be acting unreasonably. Now one of the points about um, trying to object to something like um, parking where we've got no evidential base to support us um, that can be some often a, a case of cost against us in relation to and something I was alluding to earlier when I was talking about it when it's a very subjective matter um, the 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 fact that you have a contrary view to an officer 
isn't acting unreasonably, it's just saying I form an opinion which is contrary to what the officer has said. If you are of the view that the alterations to the ground floor fenestration are so harmful as to justify a refusal in this instance, then it, that's entirely within your gift to, to reach co uh, collectively as a committee that view. Um, as to whether or not it would be likely to get the case across, it wouldn't be unreasonable for you to form a view because it is an opinion. And if I may just tease out a bit, so just because it goes off to appeal doesn't mean to say if the plan inspector looks at this and says actually the, what the, the, the method of thinking was quite right and he doesn't always award costs against the council even if the, uh, even if, uh, the appeal is allowed. Um, case of costs, um, not all decisions made by the inspector when an application is um, dismissed appeal or allowed at appeal um, attracts a case of costs. You can have situations bizarrely where an application is dismissed uh, but the council still has a case of costs against us because part of their case has been unreasonable. Um, it's only this unreasonable element to it and it doesn't automatically mean that when an application is, if it goes to appeal and is successfully um, upheld and the, um, the, the development allowed that you will automatically attract a case of costs. Councillor Wood first, then Councillor Pitt. Okay. Uh, just a comment on uh, why I'm seconding, etc. I had a look at several things. First of all, um, the comment about the site is not in a designated local centre. Uh, that's PCS, PCS 18, etc. Um, and then it talked about proposals for town centres uh, in out of centre locations. Then I had a look at paragraph 91, where there's comment about. Uh, the reference to, to to make sure that it achieves a healthy, inclusive and safe places which promote social interaction. Now obviously this is a shop. I go back to the point it's going to be a big glass front in no way in a pub, no matter how significant on a corner, is it not, not going to change the designated look and feel of an area. Now when it does that we have to think of the context of the shop where it sits and what it looks like in in that area it's an out of town so it has a significant impact in that community and the context it sits in with residential houses so having looked at the design of PCS 23 just to try and gauge what I need to do the whole of PCS 23 is subjective according to how we interpret it so we're quite valid to interpret it using these words so the front front part the principles of good design with uh, the national framework and requires development to be of excellent architectural quality I can say I could build a skyscraper there which is a great design okay and architecturally significance but it's totally inappropriate so the second part of it says gives us room room to interpret the the, the context and this is about the function how is it set over overall in the area um, it goes on to talk about will establish a strong sense of place um, and will respond to local character and history and reflect the identity of the local surroundings so my refusal is based on that which is the context of the shop the design of the shop may have been of good architectural design for a shop but it doesn't, I feel that on balance, the second part of it, the context of it, just as I said about the skyscraper, wouldn't be appropriate whether it's designed well or not. The context, I don't feel, has been done. And clearly the planning inspectorate did labour previously on the, the, even though it's not a listed building, he did say this was a prominent feature. Okay, thank you. Chair, I'll need a, a small amount of indulgence here because something struck me while we've been considering this. Um, can I ask a question of Councillor Horton, please? Um, Councillor Horton, the, when, I'm concerned about when this report was written because it makes no reference whatsoever to the Harbour School. And could that be because at the time that the report, the comments came back from the highway network, um, there was no intention to reopen that unit, but the subsequent events have changed that decision. I was, I am surprised that given the nature of that school and its students, no reference was made to it in the report, and I'm wondering if the report's being based 
prior to the knowledge that the school was actually going to be reopened again. Um, the existing shop that's there is on the same side of the road on the corner. Having knocked doors in that road with Councillor Ashmore and her um, from the horse's mouth from the residence, there are a number of concerns about traffic movements around that junction. Combining de deliveries for that site with the nature of children coming out and needing to cross that junction to access what we in all likelihood, let's face it, would be the surviving unit there because the idea that a little corner shop's going to out trade a, a national chain is pretty remote. So I'm just a bit concerned and, and for that reason, until unless we can get clarification right now, I'm going to propose a deferral because I believe that the officer's report may not have been in possession of all the facts, but that may not be the case according to uh, the officers. So, Pitt, can we have a comment on uh, whether or not the uh, reopening of the Harbour School would have changed the uh, recommendations? Um, just, just speaking to the to the officer. Um, the officer is unaware as to whether or not the Harbour School has been considered because obviously there's a matter of timing there. So her response is they have looked at the local schools, but the the response that's come back, obviously from from highways, they couldn't say if it included or excluded or took into consideration the Harbour School. So uh, it's for members to decide as to whether or not that so material is that you would need to, to feel to uh, that you needed to defer the application let that question be answered and then return it at the next committee so, um, councillor atkins um i mean on on that point i can't personally see that it makes an enormous difference given there are other schools in the area um, and given that the report is basing some of its conclusions on majority footfall rather than people driving to and from the shop. And second of all, I, I don't know whether or not this is the case, but it seems to me that it's not entirely the shop's responsibility. And, and there is currently permission for a pub. I don't know if you can argue that the shop is likely to create a great deal more traffic in the area than the pub would have done. And I'm not clear whether or not it's actually the shop's responsibility given the advice we have from the highways plus there are shops and and uh, things which attract traffic in the area already i think ev i think the report recognizes this is an area of quite high traffic flow but it doesn't actually prevent the presence of a shop on that location but um, perhaps the officers could clarify that um thank you councillor horton I just need to, for clarity, explain that it actually, whilst the school, the Old Harbour School, is being reopened, it's not being reopened at, in the same way as it was. So there will be a very different type of um, child there. It may well have an impact on this because it's actually going to be um, a, a satellite of the Mary Rose School. So it might actually mean that there's more um, traffic so it might be that it's worth looking at, but not because of the um, the use of children coming and going as it was before in under its previous harbour school setup. By that, you're drawing attention to the need for transport for many of those children yeah. because they have severe physical disabilities. Yeah. Councillor Hunt, and then I'm going to move towards winding us towards Indeed. So, you know, the planning officers have made very clear that this is not a listed building. Uh, I quite accept that. Uh, there are material, despite what has been said, there are material planning considerations here, because on the last decision, the, it was uh, considering the, the impact of the roller shutter blinds upon it. This time, we intend to take disc cutters to it and actually damage the building and that seemed to me would be quite contrary to what the planning inspector was talking about in his power in the paragraph that's been quoted on page seven which we're all very much aware of now and then so far as um costs go which i don't i never talk about here actually because i don't think it's a good idea um uh, on this occasion we've mounted a very 
cogent and reasonable argument as to why this should be refused and I think that, that, that that's where I'll leave it and uh, I think there's every reason to refuse. Thank you. I'm going to move towards... Uh, okay. May, may I make a quick general comment just because I haven't made a, a general comment on it. I, I think a lot of the ground has been covered. All, all um, I want to say is, is that I do think we have to keep in mind this building is currently empty and bordering on derelicts. Um, and obviously it's going to require some building work done to the building in order to bring it into um, uh, sort of modern and, and suitable usage regardless of what usage it goes to. So I, I don't personally think that the fact that, that, um, that the windows are being loaded to ground level is, is sufficient um, to justify a refusal on, on a, a sort of immunity and appearance and character grounds because overall the character of this building is going to improve if it's being occupied and used. Um, now there is the question of would it be better as residential, that's not actually relevant to today, plus we're about to consider some uh, the question of nitrates which might mean that that's not actually an easy um, application to approve in the future anyway. Um, so I do wonder if we're being uh, fair to the, the owner of the building who is looking to improve the look of this building, who is looking to bring it back into regular use. And yes, there are residents' concerns which I understand, which are sad, but this is, this is an empty, derelict building that we're proposing to leave empty and derelict um, with, I think, a questionable ground. Yes, yeah, thank you. I mean, I d can I confidently say that there are real material considerations for to, to refuse this? No. We can use flowery language all we like, discutters to it and things like that. Um, or, um, but the fundamentally, people want empty buildings in this city to be occupied. Um, and do I think that there are, with that in mind, strong grounds to refuse it? No. So I stand my ground on the second thing. Okay, thank you. I'm going to um, propose a sort of order for this. The first, I'd like to consider the question of deferral. Is that... Uh, I think that my proposal's first, so it has to be taken in order. Take in order. Okay. Uh, can I have permission to take it first because it's silly to talk no. about deferral arts with maybe. Thank your pardon, that's the process and you have to stick to it, Madam okay. Chair. I'm just going to look in my books, but I believe and not actually a motion for doesn't deferral takes precedence. Yes, it doesn't okay. make sense. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I believe is the case. Yes, do you have a seconder before we go into that particular can of worms? Yes, there's a deferral on the grounds of the highways haven't done enough to us, given the new circumstances. And on that point, can I give some advice in relation to the highways engineer? Um, if members are concerned they don't have enough information before them today to reach a decision on that point, my best advice to you is defensively to defer it and allow the officer the opportunity to mm. clarify that point. However, if you feel that the highways engineer has given enough information, I'm not in a position, because I'm not a highways engineer myself, to say that, oh, well, he would obviously have routinely taken that into account or not. Um, so that's why my advice, as I say, best defensively, is that you could seek clarification on it by way of deferral. Um, but, yeah, is there a certain latent expectation that you would have taken that into account already? So... And have we got a, uh, Councillor Pitt, do you want to pursue the idea of the deferral, and have we got a seconder for that? Uh, it's a narrow call for me, but because of the way that school's going to be brought back into use, and the likelihood that uh, no one in their right mind is going to think that the corner shop's going to survive with a larger retail unit there, so... I mean, it may be that the corner shop moves to the large retail, you know, I don't know. But the, uh, I suppose that's always an option. But it will mean children crossing the road where they had not previously crossed the road. That's an inevitable occurrence. That junction is awful. It's badly laid out. Um, and I know from, and from speaking to residents down there, there are issues with it. And whilst when it was a pub and it was open later in the day, Footfall, you know, not that many people, despite what some people say, drive to the pub. Um, I just think the situation is slightly different. I would like to have had... It says very clearly in the, in the Highways Network comments, it is noted that the round, roads surrounding the application sites are residential in nature. It makes no reference to a school being there at all, 
and therefore we cannot have certainty that that was given consideration and it's no one's fault this was a recent change of uh, circumstances that's been required by the council so I don't know what he may or may not think um, and I'd just like to get his opinion so yes I'm pursuing deferral is there a seconder for so anybody to second that uh, recommendation no okay so we can't pursue that uh, now move to the motion the, the motion to refuse this um, can I just check with you the grounds um, uh, they were written down by no, the officers the grounds uh, as I you, if you want me to read it all out for the third time I'll let, let me summarize it as chair here no I'll it, summarize them because it's my refusal thank you madam so what we've got here is um, uh, so I've written it down so that the proposal, these are my exact words, the proposal to remove the windows and seals and replace them with modern materials amount to an unsympathetic feature that failed to relate to the unique architectural quality of the former pub as described by the planning inspector, I'm using his words and the previous decision, um, which I presume was acceptable last time, and that therefore this, this would detract from the street scene, etc., etc., and that is, uh, it, will, it will undermine its contribution to the urban landscape of the area, and that's contrary to PCS 23, which I think is the third time I've said it. I, I believe there are other um, things that um, Councillor Wood brought up that would slightly change those reasons for refusal. Do you want to add Sorry, if, if I might. It was from my perspective, um, when Councillor Horton spoke, she was speaking with regard to use as well as design. So I just want clarification on whether or not you're importing any of those concerns into reasons for refusal so we can properly sort of redress that with the committee and get an endorsed motion on the basis of possibly both design and use. Yep. Yep. Councillor Wood or Councillor Horton or uh, add to that... Um, reasons for refusal. Okay. Um, because we covered off the issue and I give you um, the advice in terms of the, um, the visual appearance and the subjective nature of that. Um, what I would say is in relation to the use we do not have any policy grounds to defend that you can't uh, you're talking about using the design to uh, um, try and establish that a use is unacceptable whereas actually what we're, we're talking about is a, a policy basis that is a fully compliant use from our local plan perspective um, you can you can look at it from the perspective of saying well actually the use of the building um, the the characters change because of the the windows but I don't think you could actually um, attach a use an, ob an objection on use grounds against that it would it would be unsustainable at appeal I would suggest thank you very much on that point then, if, if we refuse it on the grounds suggested by Councillor Hunt alone, um, which are the appearance grounds, does that mean we are effectively approving the change of use but rejecting the application for this planning? Um, or um, are we still going to be refusing both aspects of the application? The application is refused, um, or would be refused if members minded to actually vote that way against it, but in fact actually the, the grounds for refusal would be the actual impact upon the visual appearance. You wouldn't be raising an objection to the actual change of use to a shop. Can we move to a vote on the basis of that um, proposal to refuse the application on the grounds that Councillor Hunt has read out and that you've made a note of, is that right? Purely design terms yeah. is the understanding, as yeah. Councillor Hunt's yeah. said many times. Councillor Wood, yeah. then. Sorry, Chair. Talk about usage. Okay, I go back to PCS 2.3. There are looking things and there are doing things in there. Okay, doing things are function. So it clearly states will function well and add to the overall quality of the area that's not a looking thing that's a functioning thing a doing thing so I'm I'm slightly 
worried about the, about the context of what we're being asked here. So clearly, and then that there follows, will establish a strong sense of place and respond to local character and history and reflect the identity of local sur surroundings. So are we saying that is purely a design option there? Uh, because those words are very subjective to what responds to the local character because character is 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 a feeling thing okay okay and, and sorry chair just to finish it what the reason i'm the reason i go back to my my uh, uh, example of a skyscraper can look beautiful there sitting in the area but clearly I've picked something there you wouldn't put in place and it can have great design, in other words, purely on design, but it's inappropriateness in the area because you have to take the context of the area into place. And that's why I'm saying, which is, we can't help but take the context of this fact it was a pub on the corner in a residential, busy residential area and what that shop front will look like in its context. Uh, we'll ask for officers' advice on this. I think. Um, yes, please. Um, the the policy to which you refer in PCS twenty three is is a design policy. Um, it's not talking about the use. I understand what you're saying is that it looks like a pub, um, and therefore once you start changing the fenestration, the, it it doesn't look like a pub. That's an assessment of it's a prominent building in the location and you're changing the fenestration, that will change the appearance of the building. Um, if it's in context. It's in, it's, it, but it's in a character context. It is not a use policy. It is a design policy. Uh, I think you're talking across the premises. I beg your pardon, Mr. Chair, Madam Chair. So he's talking about the National Planning Policy Framework, and we're kind of talking about PCS 23. So I think there's a bit of cross purposes here. So he's talking about page 7 on the report, paragraph 3rd down, the National Planning Policy Framework. So, so. <laughs> so Chair, I think in refusing it on the design, I would like to add is how that design sits in the context of that area. Okay? Because, which is covered in here, because the overall building is a pub. You wouldn't the pub would not be a shop to begin with, and there are buildings next to it, so it's how it sits in that context. Just as an observation, we do have to bear in mind that there may be a planning application for residential that will change aspects of the fenestration and the windows and other things, and we've all said that if we were in the circumstance of, appro of approving that, we would like it better. Um, and uh, I just wanted to point that out. Councillor Pitt. Um, Chair, just trying to make sure that if um, if a motion for refusal is going to be supported, that we have the best possible argument for that refusal. With your indulgence, could the officers show us how this building is accessed, please, as a as it's intended to be as a shop? There's a widened door on it, but we can receive the plans, please. The uh, elevations gone to sleep because it's been sat there so long. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Alison. Um, you have got plans in front of you. Yeah. Um, if I can just be a little bit smaller than my eyes, but right. Well, I can recall there's an elevation showing a widened door yes, recess. Yes, on, on the oh. Guildford Road frontage, um, there is currently a recessed door, um, but it's a single door. They in order to get the double doors that they would require for their shop, they bring it out slightly, but it would still be recessed, but you'd lose your two uh, sort of window lights on the side. Um, why isn't this waking up? <laughs> so is that... Oh, oh, oh. Is that flat onto the street? Uh, or is there a step? Hang on, I think I might have a photograph. Somewhere. Right. This is the Guildford Road um, entrance, so you can see that it's, um, it's currently recessed. They're going to bring the doors out slightly, which will mean you'll lose these two side windows. Mm -hmm. Let me get the elevation up. Um, that makes it worse, Steve. Thank you. There. Right. 
So that's the existing elevation, that's the existing door that I just showed you the photograph of with mm -hmm. two side lights. Um, and this would be, they'd bring it out within the recess, not completely flush with the fr main front elevation. So there would be a bit of a recess you'll see here and here, but they would have double doors in there. Okay, um, and is that flat to the street or is there a step? The threshold, uh, I understand it's flat at the moment. Let me just go back to the photograph. Yes, it's, it's a level threshold at the moment and the elevations don't show anything. Okay, um, others may wish to amend their comments based on what I've just drawn your attention to. Indeed, it makes it worse. Clearly makes it worse. So if we put that into the reference of the double doors uh, further detract from the appearance of the building um, and the similar words that are used earlier on. I'm most grateful to Councillor Pitt for pointing that out. How I missed it, I have no idea. So we have a motion. Uh, would you like to say something, Sim? Yeah, I'm just trying to um, just to draw together the two the concerns you're, you've raised about the character of the area and you, your obviously your issues about the fenestration. Okay. Um, I think Consist and actually uh, understand uh, the, the councillor's comments. Uh, um, I've made my view very clear. Yep, I understand that. Um, you've obviously, are you, well, it's a question of, of whether or not the member, are you content with that, the resolution that has been put forward? Can, could we just read it out from the office side to the members to get an endorsement of what? They're being asked to resolve the point. Yes, please. Um, we, we've tried to uh, obviously put it more in a um, to a, a more a framed version for the reason that a reason for refusal, if that's okay, because it was uh, obviously we've got to be quite um, tight in terms of the wording. Um, so, based upon what you've said, that the the, 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 um, the suggested would be that the proposed development would. Uh, be detrimental to the visual appearance of this prominent building um, and uh, character of the area by reason of unsympathetic alterations to the ground floor fenestration and double doors contrary to the provisions of policy CS23. Are you content that that gathers up everything? Because I'm trying to pick up the conservate your your wider um, impact. I think we got in there the use of the, to replace the windows with mod, with modern materials. Um, we talked about the doors and they det uh, detract. Uh, I mean, I've used the words from the previous refusal, which I presume were acceptable to the officers back then, uh, and that's to remove the window sills and, and they amount to an unsympathetic feature, the doors and the windows, which will fail to relate to the unique architectural quality of the former pub. I think that's the fourth or fifth time that I've said that, you know, today, and um, it's contrary to policy PCS 23, and it's reflected in the planning inspector's observations as well. But I think I've made it clear. I'm going to move for a vote on, on that, um, that we refuse the um, application on those grounds. Can I have a show of hands, please? Those in favour of refusing. Okay, so the, there are two in favour of refusing and the rest are against. So then we can move to the next motion, which is that we approve the application. Votes against. Votes against the motion to refuse. Two in favour of refusal. Yes. In theory, everyone else could abstain. Oh, okay. Who votes in favour of um, uh, against the motion to refuse? Three. Who's abstaining? Okay. So the motion's carried. The motion was defeated. Defeated. The yeah. motion was defeated. So therefore, we do we have to go to the other proposal, which yeah, is to approve it. To uh, so we have a, a proposal from um, over here to uh, from Donna to approve this. Um, all in favour of approving it, um, could they show their hands? Okay. All against. 
approving it. Three against three. So your vote as well, Chair? Yes. Casting vote to you. I've got a casting vote. I want to vote to approve it. Okay. Sorry. We had an abstention there as well. So that, can I just be clear, because that vote was 4-3 to refuse, and you hadn't voted. No. All right, okay. No, it wasn't. It was 3-3, so I used my casting vote. Thank you all very much. That was... Um, uh, I'm, I'm thank you all very much. I think we can uh, assure Dave, Councillor Ashmore that we've given proper and uh, lengthy uh, attention to this important matter. The second item on the agenda, substantive, is mainly from information, which is um, an information document about the um, water quality issues in the Solent catchment area and planning decisions. Um, I've, I, it's been indicated to me that some of you who, who are on the Cabinet would have had an opportunity to um, understand this further, um, and that this is, at this stage is mostly for information. But if there are any questions, if people have read it, then of course um, officers here will, will take those. Uh, but first I'll just uh, pass over to uh, Chief Officer here, Sim, to um, just um, introduce it further. Thank you. Um, yeah, obviously you're aware the, 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 the uh, report's in front of you, um, and as it, as it says, stated, that it's brought for information purposes only. Um, in terms of update, uh, the report you see in front of you is the one that was presented to committee, uh, to, sorry, to Cabinet. Um, because of the short period of time since Cabinet, um, there isn't really any update. Uh, we were hoping to get some things moving. Uh, we are working very hard as officers. Um, in conjunction with members to try and look at uh, mitigation measures that would allow us to start to issue decisions at this moment in time because of the very short period of time since Cap we went to Cabinet. Uh, we haven't progressed those, we, we have progressed those but we're not in a position to actually say that we've come up with any solutions but obviously officers in conjunction with other local authorities push um, um, are looking at alternatives and mitigation measures moving forward. What we will do is we'll keep you updated um, every time we have a committee on where we, st uh, where we stand with this until such point as we've successfully overcome this problem and it can allow us to then start issuing decisions relating to developments that include overnight stays. Councillor Atkins. Uh, yeah, just just for the um, sake of, of clarity, um, we're being given this report sort of just to, to take note of it. There isn't any particular um, actions that the planning committee can or should take in this matter. The, all the decisions at the present are a matter for cabinet. Are they in terms of whether or not planning applications for residential and overnight stays come before planning committee at the moment? That's a, that's a decision being taken by officers, by cabinet, or, or I by understand this that. Uh, thank you. I understand that. Uh, the, obviously, decisions will be made by Cabinet and may be um, brought to us in full council in due course, but the, the main issue is that we are waiting for legal and council advice so that it's, uh, the, the Cabinet isn't at the stage of being able to make uh, decisions about the way forward. Perhaps Councillor Pitt could uh, help us. Yeah, um, I've been very clear that the Planning Committee needs to have a role in this work moving forward and if there's anything in the report that members wish to challenge or question then they should absolutely do so and that every stage of the process where there are updates on the work being progressed that same opportunity exists so the planning committee is the sounding board for this piece of work as it moves forward because that's the nature of this committee as far as I'm concerned that's supported by Councillor Mason who's chair of the planning committee so if anybody wants to ask questions or challenge things then they should absolutely feel free to do so. Councillor Jones. I've had a long conversation with Councillor Pitt about this as a relevant cabinet member um, and so I think there's a lot of work that does need to be done on this. I think it's a significant issue for the City of Portsmouth particularly as our local economy is so heavily based on people that work in, in the house building industry um, and I'll continue to have conversations with, with him and officers. Um, I just wanted to point out, and I did speak to Sim about this before the meeting started, that it's worth members being aware that having council took a decision, whether that was right or not, uh, last night, and I believe they've got another meeting today, I think it might have been cabinet for council, the two different things, about proceeding at risk uh, to issue applications, same is, uh, can be said for Southampton City Council, which took a decision last week. Um, 
information. The um, planning, lead planning officers group uh, of push meets tomorrow, mm. and there will be outcomes from that uh, and some steer as to what may uh, what we may do going forward. Um, we obviously can't sit in limbo indefinitely. Um, I, I'm aware of the. Um, the activity in those two boroughs as to uh, the unitary of the borough as to what's happening going forward but I would like us to have the opportunity tomorrow at the push meeting for them to report back to that why they've made that decision to inform whether we would make a dis similar decision or not because it is ultimately our decision as to whether we proceed at risk but it could just be that they are maybe choosing not to have taken legal advice and we need some clarification around that. Okay, um, unless there are any immediate questions, I suggest that what we do is what we would normally do as members of the planning right, committee sir. is to ask... Go on. No, it's all right, right Chair. I think you're about to sum up what I was going to ask for, which is what's the next steps then? <laughs> Uh, feel free to come in if I, my summary isn't correct. Um, that, that we should keep in touch as members of the planning committee with planning officers on this matter um, and indeed uh, make sure that we are fully informed. And I very much welcome the fact that Councillor Pitt and uh, the Cabinet want to keep planning the planning committee uh, informed and in the loop and able to comment on this throughout. And, and I think this uh, is a very useful um, information um, for us all. And I look forward to hearing the results of the push uh, deliberations and of Council's view on where we stand, and also taking into account the effect this could have on our meeting our housing targets and therefore on the way that we negotiate housing targets in the local plan. So providing those things, uh, if, providing we're able to get involved in that, I welcome the fact that we're, um, we're, we're in the loop and, and long may that continue, but also the door is always open to us to get um, up-to-date advice from our planning officers, either individually or severally. Does that answer your question, Before, Councillor yeah. Wood? Yeah. Before we go, can we get a resolution to a matter of process as to whether an, a deferral, you said it will overtake any other matter on the table, can you write to us all and tell us and, and uh, send us a bit of legislation that, or law that says that? be good to hear and to learn about it. Certainly, I have the notes in front of me that confirm that position. I'm um, happy to do a wider note um, just to confirm that for you. If you excuse me, it never happened in the past, so I'm gl yeah. glad we've got it right now. Thank you. We've now got to the end of the agenda and I declare this meeting closed. Thank you all very much. Uh, members, apparently there's some training, I think, I believe on the 25th of June and Sim will just, outside the meeting and as it were now, Sim will tell us a bit more about it. Yeah, we've well, obviously we've we had the um, we've we've had the um, training session that I, I ran. Um, we've done that on two occasions. We we have a, an update for those who couldn't make it last night, um, as, um, and we're also holding a whole day events um, in in the future. There's, you don't have to. There's two of them. Um, the two different dates to give you a bit of flexibility and that's an outside trainer coming in. It's to do with uh, probity and planning and to deal with the very sort of questions that we're talking about in terms of um, procedures, processes, designed very much to support you in your role and to uh, ensure that you are protected. It is crucially important that, that, that uh, obviously members receive that level of support so that, that they can move forward in making decisions um, uh, clear and unencumbered from the potential risk of challenge because of um, things that, that uh, that you may not know or, or may need clarification on so it's just there to support you so we are encouraging you to attend there's one on the 25th of, of june i can't go because of a family funeral there's one on the 18th of july um, so there's two opportunities for us in the immediate future and i do think it's important for us to remember that if we can't have an auditable trail that we have been um uh on training we're likely to be found wanting should the inspectorate and the um, people, inspectors who deal with appeals 
um, find that we have too many um, di contentious decisions. These are, these are your training sessions. They're not um, they're not mandatory. Um, obviously, it would be good if you could you could be there for the whole day event. Um, we are doing it on over two days. Um, this is the same thing repeated. So if you if you find you can't do the morning, you can always attend because it will just be a duplicate one morning that it will be exactly the same. So if you're struggling one day, you do one in the morning and then the next one in the afternoon or whatever. Um, we're trying to give you as much flexibility because we do appreciate the problems for that members have. Hence us actually having the two day event. Same same with me, Sim. I can make um, the 25th, but there's a 10 till 12 uh, appointment that I have. So you know.